So these are bananas. And it's not just any kind of banana, it's called the Cavendish banana. It's likely what you're gonna find in your grocery store. It's what they grow all around here. And it looks like a banana, it's green now, it'll get yellow, but it's really the culmination of decades of human ingenuity and a huge industry of banana growers, banana sellers, and banana eaters like you and me. Chances are you only think about bananas when you're buying groceries or need a snack. The thing is, bananas are special. They're the fourth most important crop humans grow after rice, wheat, and corn, and we eat 100 billion of them each year. But the banana as we know it is facing some big problems. And by problems, I mean extinction. Buenos dias. Eh, registro, por favor. Okay. Debe quedar una trazabilidad con el fin de, de ante cualquier introducción. While the world is still grappling with COVID, banana plantations like this one in Rio Hacha, Colombia, are fighting their own deadly pandemic. We're washing up. We have to, you know, put on different boots, put on coveralls. Este es el primer pediluvio que encontramos en la finca de ingreso. Walk through it. You know, coming here, I knew that this was serious, but I didn't know that the protocols would be this rigorous. Like, it must be very serious if this is what we have to go through to even just get into the farm. De el mismo momento de la declaratoria de la emergencia. Fue muy rápido. The emergency is a microscopic fungus called Fusarium. It's decimating banana plantations around the globe and threatening the very existence of this essential food and the communities who depend on it. A banana pandemic might seem kind of silly, but for the people who work these fields and the billions of dollars produced by the banana industry, it's not a laughing matter. All of this is happening because of one very specific reason. Pretty much every banana sold today is from the same variety, the Cavendish. They look good, transport easily, and well, taste delicious. The bad news is our love for the Cavendish has created a monoculture. So a single biological disease can infect every plantation and tank the entire industry. And Fusarium is exactly that disease that's now spread to 21 countries. Just simply, how serious is the fungus of a problem to the banana industry? It's very serious, this problem, because it's a hongo que es capaz de sobrevivir en el suelo hasta 40 años. Eh, esto nos afecta tanto las exportaciones como también la seguridad alimentaria. This is like the front line of the pandemic in Colombia. Estamos peleando contra algo que no vemos. Y cuando ya vemos la planta con síntomas, ya basado en su, en su etapa, en su evolución, en su desarrollo dentro de la planta, ya tiene varios meses de estar ahí. So we're not just talking about bananas here, we're talking about people's livelihoods. The funny thing about this banana pandemic is that the exact same thing happened seven decades ago. The Cavendish's forefather, a banana called the Gros Michel, was completely wiped out by the ancestor of today's fungus. Banana botanists are busy trying to make sure history doesn't repeat itself. Science is racing to beat the banana pandemic. And they're doing it in places like the Netherlands, where we are, because they don't have to be afraid of spreading the fungus. I'm going to show you uh, how the fusarium looks under the microscope. We have spores here, mm -hmm. and those are the ones that are spreading around. So these are the little fungus that's causing such a big problem. Yeah. You're something like a fungus detective, huh? Yes, kind of. I, I have the opportunity to help with the diagnostics on many of the new incursions of the pathogen. Fernando's solution to the pandemic is in the greenhouse, where he's trying to breed a banana that is immune to the fungus. Oh, wow. It's just like Colombia in here. We are doing um, traditional breeding. That means that we pollinate by hand. What's at stake if you don't do this right, if this doesn't happen in time? What's the downside? Yeah, the worst scenario is that we cannot have bananas anymore because everything in, that we find in the market is Cavendish. Great, so can I give it a try? Yeah, please. So 
So I'm finding some flowers up here. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the male flower of a variety of banana that's been proven to be resistant to the fungus and manually fertilizing the female part of the plant of a different varietal that is more related to the Cavendish. So the hope is that they'll produce hybrids that are both resistant and tasty. It does feel a bit like I'm doing something a little intimate. But even if scientists are successful, it doesn't solve the problem at the root of this pandemic. As long as we keep growing one variety of banana in the world, there's always the risk that a single disease can wipe it out. Is the time for Cavendish monoculture over? Yes, definitely. I think uh, if we want to keep eating bananas, we have to change that. We have to be open to new varieties, to eat other types of bananas, because if we keep in the same system, we will come back to the problem in the future, for sure, another pandemic. The Cavendish monoculture has to change. There's no vaccine for this pandemic? No, there is no vaccine for that, unfortunately.